In the late 2000s, Zimbabwe underwent one of the world's most extreme cases of hyperinflation, reaching its peak in 2008, when prices doubled every 24 hours. Hello, and welcome to Open Tierra. Today, we're delving into the captivating story of Zimbabwe, a nation with a rich history and diverse culture. From its ancient civilizations to the colonial era, and the struggle for independence, Zimbabwe has undergone profound transformations. Join us and stay to the end to find out about Zimbabwe's geography, history, culture, and economy, and how it's slowly recovering. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country located in southern Africa between the Zambezi and Limpopo rivers. It has a tropical climate with distinct rainy and dry seasons. Let's take a closer look at the geography of this diverse country. The most prominent landform is the extensive High Central Plateau, which covers most of the country. This plateau averages between 1,200 to 1,600 meters, or 3,937 to 5,249 feet in elevation, with higher mountains along the plateau's edges. The Matobo Hills in southern Zimbabwe has an impressive granite topography marked by castle copies, unusual rock formations created by erosion. In the northeast, the Nyanga Mountains reach up to 2,592 meters, the highest point in Zimbabwe. To the east lies the Eastern Highlands mountain range. Zimbabwe is home to a diversity of ethnic groups, languages, and religious beliefs that enrich the country's cultural landscape. The two major ethnic groups are the Shona, accounting for about 82% of the population, and the Endabela, making up 14%. The Shona inhabit the northern and eastern regions of Zimbabwe, consisting of many subgroups and dialects. The Ndebele entered present-day Zimbabwe during the early 19th century, settling mainly in the southwestern parts of the country. Additionally, small numbers of mixed-race Asians and European whites call Zimbabwe home. There are also minority tribes such as the Tonga, Venda, and Kalanga peoples. While English is the official language used in government, education, and formal contexts, most Zimbabweans also speak native African languages. Shona dialects collectively form the most widely spoken native language. Ndebele, spoken by the minority Ndebele ethnic group, is the second most common language. Numerous other minority African languages can be heard in Zimbabwe, including Tonga, Shangani, and Venda, among others. Zimbabwe is working to give national status to 16 languages to celebrate its rich linguistic diversity. Today, over 80% of Zimbabweans adhere to Christianity, although often blended with traditional indigenous beliefs. Catholicism has grown rapidly in recent decades. Additionally, Zimbabwe hosts followers of African Zionist Christian groups mixing strong Pentecostal features with African religious practices. Protestant denominations are also well represented, especially within the Ndebele community. Minority religions include traditional African faiths, Islam, Hinduism, and Judaism. Regardless of faith, religion plays an influential role in daily Zimbabwean life and culture. Zimbabwean cuisine is a melting pot of indigenous African food traditions blended with some British influences. Staple ingredients like cornmeal, peanuts, beans, and greens are used to create dishes that provide comforting, wholesome food. Let's explore some of the most beloved meals and snacks that comprise Zimbabwean food culture. Mopane worms, also known as Mopani or Amasimbi are a popular traditional food in some African countries, including Zimbabwe. These worms are the larvae of the emperor moth, Gonimbrasia belina, and are often harvested from mopane trees. Mopane worms are rich in protein and other nutrients, making them a valuable food source. 
The most common accompaniment to Zimbabwean dishes is sadza, a thick porridge made from cornmeal. To eat sadza, Zimbabweans pinch some of the porridge and form it into a small ball with their fingers. This is then dipped it into meat stews, gravies, or vegetables. Chimodo. This is a type of savory Zimbabwean bread made from cornmeal. It is deep fried and usually served as a snack or appetizer, sometimes accompanied by a spicy dipping sauce. Muriwo Unedovi, translated as vegetables in peanut butter. This dish features leafy greens cooked in a flavorful peanut butter sauce. It's a nutritious and satisfying vegetable side dish. Modern humans have inhabited this region for over 100,000 years. Beginning in the 11th century, several powerful African civilizations and kingdoms ruled the land until the British colonized it in the late 19th century. After a difficult period transitioning to majority rule, Zimbabwe today is working to achieve stability and development while balancing its colonial past with its African identity. The early kingdoms that developed between the 11th and 15th centuries, such as Great Zimbabwe and the Torwa, Mutapa and Rozwi states were powerful empires built off mining and controlling trade routes. They constructed large stone palaces and fortifications, including Great Zimbabwe, which lends its name to modern Zimbabwe. This early period established much of the Shona culture and language that dominates Zimbabwe today. In the 1880s, British settlers established control over the region, calling it Southern Rhodesia after the mining magnate Cecil Rhodes. This ushered in a colonial period that saw a large inflow of British settlers who gained political power and land at the expense of the native African majority who were forced into low-wage labor and restricted to native reserves. After a violent civil war, Zimbabwe finally achieved independence as a majority rule state in 1980, changing its name to Zimbabwe. Robert Mugabe became Zimbabwe's first prime minister and later president, holding power for nearly 40 years. While his early leadership brought more equitable access to health and education, over time Mugabe's policies became increasingly authoritarian and devastated Zimbabwe's economy. Today, Zimbabwe is emerging from decades of mismanagement and international isolation. With Mugabe's resignation in 2017, followed by a period of political change, Zimbabwe has an opportunity to chart a new path forward, balanced between its colonial past and hopes for an autonomous, prosperous future. The story of Zimbabwe's economy is one of great promise, struggle, and now cautious optimism. They have abundant natural resources and fertile lands that drove economic prosperity for a time after independence. However, challenges emerged. Economic mismanagement, corruption, and international isolation took their toll. Yet today, it stands poised to tap its vast potential and reclaim a more prosperous future. In the early 1980s, Zimbabwe's economy was full of promise. Zimbabwe had some of the best infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa, a thriving agricultural export sector, and a relatively diversified industrial base. Mineral exports of gold and lithium were generating foreign currency. Zimbabwe's social indicators outshone regional peers as education and healthcare expanded. The future looked bright. Sadly, Zimbabwe's initial economic success proved fleeting. The early 2000s were dominated by economic instability and decline. Controversial land reforms disrupted commercial farming. Government spending on involvement in the Democratic Republic of Congo war drained resources. Corruption and mismanaged government programs led to hyperinflation, peaking at 500 billion percent 2008, wiping out savings. Infrastructure and social services crumbled. For most Zimbabweans, daily life became a struggle.
In 2009, Zimbabwe retired its worthless currency and adopted the U.S. dollar bringing stability but losing control over monetary policy. The government slowly implemented economic reforms, attracting some new investment. Chinese infrastructure projects brought improvements. Zimbabwe's substantial informal sector kept day-to-day -day economic activity humming. Though still poor, the economy showed glimpses of a turnaround. Today, cautious optimism prevails about Zimbabwe's economic future with a GDP of $28 billion. The peaceful transition of power in 2017 raised hopes for substantive reforms that have partially materialized. Mining, agriculture, and tourism present growth opportunities if managed transparently. Debt relief could unlock international funds, but risks remain. Currency volatility, political tensions, and corruption could derail progress. Time will tell if Zimbabwe's economy can fulfill its promise. If you enjoyed this video on Zimbabwe, you'll love this next one.